Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well. So this was a nightmare. So this was the second part to my load objects and room system I had been playing with. And I forgot how much of a nightmare these were. So I'm going to run you guys through it. I'm hoping I've simplified it enough that it makes sense. Um, firstly, I just want to say everyone, you guys are awesome. Just again, you have no clue how amazing you guys are with the interaction on the channel. Um, so let's get into it. Prepare for a headache. I've just spent the past three hours fighting with this. So the way the original system worked is we would load objects in based off a text file. So that this is using that system, but we also have to do a little bit more. So then when I add an object into room, for example, you can see I've got these question marks, which are just my test objects here. They dynamically load regardless if I input them in the text file or input them through Game Maker. That is what this system will do. That's why it was such a pain because you have to think completely differently. So under the test object, if I jump into the create function, and this time I remember to make the text bigger, um, you'll see here um, that I've got what I've called a report back system. So it's just reporting back to a global object so I can figure out its ID. So here I've just got a callback ID that's set to false, a for loop that references the global array for IDs, it runs through the checklist. If it finds an ID in that global list that's equal to zero, it will fill that with this information. It's just to keep the array clean and to get rid of the entry zero problem that you find when you try to do stuff like this. If it doesn't find anything reported back, it will set itself to false, oh, sorry, to true, which then triggers the second statement, which just basically then says add one to end of list and it adds the ID. What that lets the system do now is it now knows the ID of each of the reported back objects. And in a few of my other videos, I've talked about how you can use IDs to um, object control other objects. So let's look at the actual load and save system now. So under the create function on it, all I've got is my report back array. Now, as an example, if you're running multiple globals, Sometimes it's smarter to throw them in a master global that then just gets imported and just runs throughout the whole game. Um, because this is only one or two objects, I'm just handling them at the object level instead of a more master-based system. Um, the next step I've done is I've got three arrays. I've got a object array that carries the name. I've got a X array and the Y array. So nothing too crazy right now. Um, under my draw event, I've got a draw setup just so I can see some basic information. So I'm drawing the array length so I know how long my room load array is when I load it. Um, this is just bug checking. This is drawing um, the array and then this is just doing some fancy array work where I just add 16, drop it down to grab the next bit of info. Now the fun part. You've been warned. So this is, and I'm gonna to try to get as much room space as I can here. Oh, no, that doesn't help me, Game Maker. Bad. Okay. So, in this tool here, this does a couple of things. So when I hit the home button on my keyboard, it runs the function. So obviously you tie this in with whatever you want your save trigger to be. The first step I do is I create a temp save file. Under there, I do what you guys normally do when you're writing a text file. This time though, I'm grabbing the room name and the text, which means each time this particular program is gonna run, it's individualized to that room. So that means you can have multiple rooms set up with multiple different configurations and this system will read each of them individually because it will work it out based on the room name dynamically as well. You can change the name and it will update. Um, this is the same kind of stock standard, so it's going to write a line count so I know how many lines it is. Then it's just going to run through a for loop. So the for loop is going to look at the length of the global array here that we've generated for IDs. 
So that's why that report back's important because it now knows how many objects it needs to save in the system. The next big step is we need to write each of the bits of information that constitute a created object we want. So obviously I've skipped the layer function because again, I don't, oh, I haven't set layers. I don't process to know much about them. I haven't played with them. It's on my to-do list. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but basically what this is going to do is the first step is it looks at the temp save, which just pulls the same info. Then it gets object name, pulls from the global array with IDs in it, and then dot index. So dot index actually will return the correct name, which means now we don't even need to care about the names we're creating in here. The system's smart enough to know how to save that information dynamically, meaning we have less work in the long run which is good, we want less work. Um, the next two steps is the X and Y coordinates. That's nothing fancy. I'm just using the ID that I pull at the start from the test object and reporting dot X back and dot Y back. So that saves it back into the system. And then I close the save function. The second part to this tool is it actually reloads the world as well, reloads all the objects is what I should say um, as the second step. So the second step here is I start my load system and in my load system, I've got two values. I've got temp load and my temp line count. Again, it will know what room it's loading from because it's the same repeated code here and here. Next, it will generate and load the line count, which is important. Then it's gonna run through the temp line count minus one. That makes a correction because line count will be out by one as a default because we count itself plus information. Next, I load the object name, object X and object Y positions. And then I close the text file because I'm done with it. This is the part that gave me the most nightmare because it's been a very long time and I couldn't remember how to do this. So the first step we need to do is we assess the array database because it always needs to report back because that's what's telling the system how large it needs to be and what it's dealing with. So basically for the for a loop, it assesses the array, the array size and it goes through and instead of the normal count up, I count down. So in theory, I'm actually reversing the deletion process here I'm doing because you can see here, I delete an object that object will be the last number in the list. I resize the array down by one size. So in theory, what this is going to do is it's gonna go from let's say um, 10 to zero, meaning the array is now completely empty and we've resized it to be appropriately that size. The next step in this is we actually run a create function, which is now looking at the loaded object name as our array index size and it counts back up. So here, I take my global array and I save each of the IDs we create, which means I now know how many objects are in a row. And if I scroll over, you'll see I've got instance create depth, I've got my X value, my Y value, my depth or layer height has been set to one, and I use this get asset index function again. All this builds and constitutes to a um, reasonably robust saving system. If I run it, you'll see there I've got objects. If I click the home key, you'll see that it blaps me some information. And if I pull up the save location, just give me a moment, bad windows. That's not what I want. So here you'll see I generate a room. If I delete that and I hit the home key again, you will see that it generates it. And if I get into the code here, you'll see I've got four lines, so three objects, one, two, three, one read in line for knowing how many to read. If I go five and I copy and paste, and let's put you at a hundred and I don't know, random number here, five, a hundred and eight and save. Now when I load it, Oh no, it won't do it because I've separated out the functions. So let me just quickly fix that. I didn't think about that. So I'm just going to separate out the two functions, which is straightforward, pretty straightforward and easy. All I'm going to do that, that, 
Now let's just re-enter that to the end key. Because basically what's happening is it's actually going to save itself before looking at the changes. Sorry, I didn't think about that. You need to keep them separate. I was trying to be a bit too fancy. But that's an easy change. So now if I reload it, and let's change this and let's add it back in. So that should be five. And we're going to go 100 and 300. And I go save. Now I hit the end key to load it. You'll see we've got a new one here. And if I hit the save key, it's going to save it. So that was something I didn't think about. Yeah, uh, you have to separate out the functions. I was trying to be a bit too fancy. Um, I hope that helps. I know it's a little bit complicated. This will be up in the Google Drive, and um, there's no easy way to make this system. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. Um, everyone that likes, comments, you guys are all very much appreciated. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.